Today, we're going to take a look at this soldering station from Tillswall. It's a heavy box. Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, we're going to take a look at this soldering station. This is the RJ969 from Tillswall. It is available from Amazon. I will put a link down below. And I got a coupon code. So if you like this, you can save a few bucks. That's always good, right? Hey, this box is super heavy. And you know what that means. That means there's a transformer in here. Warranty. User manual. <laughs> With a QR code to download. Okay. Packaging list of what we get in the box. Soldering station, iron stand, power cord. Soldering iron, brass wire, sponge iron tips, and some solder. So this is the model RJ969. It is 65 watts. Output voltage 26 volts. Input voltage 120 volts at 60 hertz. Temperature range 200 to 480 C, 392 to 896 Fahrenheit. Ceramic heating core. There's your dimensions. Temperature stability plus or minus 1 degree C. Tip to ground impedance less than 2 ohms. Tip to ground voltage less than 2 millivolts. And it is electrostatic uh, discharge resistant. <laughs> Cleaning, precautions, troubleshooting. Okay. So the box is very nicely packed. We got three individual boxes in here. Oh, four. Let's get them out, right? Get all that out of the way. So, let's start here. Oh, okay. This is our nice soldering iron stand. Oh, that's a that's nice. That's heavy. I like that. Then we have our brass cleaning wool. Goes in there like so. Got an IEC cord with a US style plug. I'm sure if you live elsewhere on this pale blue marble, you will get the correct plug for your locale. Solder. No, uh, no indication of what this makeup is. So we got a set of tips here. These are pretty standard. There is our soldering iron. Change the tips, you just take this off, and then they slide right off. There's your ceramic heating element. I've done this when it's hot. Use a pair of pliers. I'm not a psychopath, but sometimes you just gotta change your tip, you know? That is a little difficult to thread on there. Got a nice silicone heat resistant handle there. And a female plug. And finally, the piece de resistance. Ah, that's heavy too. So it appears to be a combination of metal and plastic. Use only with a 250 volt fuse. Okay. Well, let's get it hooked up and give it a try. What do you say? All right. First thing we're going to do is tin our tip. You get an idea of the front of the. Uh, 
system, we've got an LED here. It says, when the LED is on, the iron is heating. When it flashes, it is close to reaching its desired temperature. And when it's off, it has reached the desired temperature. So I like to solder at about 350C. So we will see how long it takes to get there. I'm going to prop this up so you guys have a better view of the LED. Bring in the old stopwatch. Don't worry, I will. Here, I'll just turn these lights off now. Everybody can see a little better. And one, two, three, go. We'll see how long it takes to get to temperature. That LED is pretty bright. Unlike me. Mark, mark, mark. All right, we're approaching 20 seconds. I can smell that new metal heating up. Almost there. Wow, it's not exactly fast. All right, I'm going to stop that because if it's not heated up in a minute, eh, don't really care. Unless that is the actual indication is heated, the blinking, it said in the instructions that the light goes off. Let's see. See, it's, it's blinking at different rates. Temperature setting. Yep, oh, I thought it was off, now it's slow. When the heating indicator soldering station is on, it indicates that the soldering iron is in heating status. When it is off, it means the soldering iron has reached a temperature. When it is flashing, it indicates it is close to the setting temperature. So, I don't know. Alright. Let's start by tinning the iron. So I got some paste flux. I got some tip tinner. And I got some 60-40 rosin core solder. So what I like to do is start off by cleaning the tip to make sure there's nothing no oils or anything on there then I just want to coat it yes there is a lot of smoke let me get out the uh, solder fume extractor I'm sorry for the noise people always ask me about this it's from f-stop labs solder fume extractor I like to do this a couple times to make sure we have a good coating of solder all over the tip. Once that's done, I'm going to clean it one more time. Then I'll try a little bit of this tip tinner. I don't know how well I like this stuff. I prefer just to use solder and flux, but This uh, soldering sponge is not fantastic, but it works, and that's really all that matters. Right? Okay, let's give her a try. I mean, there's really not much we can do other than see how fast it heats up and see how well it solders. So, anyway, I got a little proto board in here, and this frame is in my Amazon store. A lot of people have asked me about it. I'll put a link down below. There's a couple of diodes. I like the diodes because they have nice thick leads so they'll take a little more heat to get a good uh, get a good joint going once again before I start clean the tip tin the iron and we'll see how it does Oh, 
Yeah, it seems fine. I'm going to angle this a little bit and zoom in here so you can get a better view. You can change the tip to whatever your preferred style is. I personally like the conical style tips. Yeah. Nice joint, shiny. Looks like a little mountain, not like an apple. No problem at all. So next, I'm going to shut this off, let it cool down, and then we'll have a look inside. All right. Before I tear it down and go inside, I thought we'd have a little solder off between the tills wall and my main soldering iron, which is that KSGR T12 type soldering iron. So we will start with the tills wall. Same solder. Another one of these diodes with the nice heavy leads in here. Tin the tip of the iron. And here we go. Once I touch this, we'll start. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. Okay. So about five seconds for a nice joint. Let me grab the uh, KSGER T12 iron. It has a little bit of a thicker tip, but they're close enough. Tin it real nice. Wipe it off. And same thing, once I touch it, we'll count. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Eh, T12 might be slightly faster, but not enough to make any fuss about. Alright, so now we'll shut them down, cool it off, and take a look inside. Alright, let's see if we got some screws hiding under these here feet. Yep. I'm going to get these out. They're way down in there. And they're tight. Which means probably self-tappers in the plastic. Which is not a big deal. It's pretty much what you would expect. Yeah, self-tappers in the plastic. Looks like the front's going to have to come off. There must be a big old transformer in there because, like I said before, this thing is heavy. And that's good. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So this is the top, it's plastic, and you can see they are just self-tappers going into plastic. And the bottom is plastic as well, I thought it was metal, but it's not. So it's an all plastic construction, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm just looking here. We have the mains coming in. I use red for. Use red for both of them? Yeah, they use red for both connectors. That's kind of odd. So we've got one going directly to the transformer, one is going through the switch, and then into the transformer. We have our two transformer wires coming out through here, and then we have the ground coming over to this little ground pad here. You can see the ground plane on here look pretty nice and thick. Have our variable resistor there. Yeah. I'm not going to tear this all apart. It's you know, you mean you know what's there. There is a uh uh rectifier and uh oh, what am I thinking of? An SCR to control the uh, the voltage not too much going on there looks like good construction I mean it seems relatively safe let's check the uh, let's check the grounds bring in a meter here put 
put it on continuity. There's the ground. It's good. I'm surprised it doesn't go to the uh, to the body of that. Goes to that pin there. Okay. Transformer and ground anywhere? No, not really. Okay. So that's a nice look at the Tillswell model RJ969. It's available on Amazon. Um, what's the price here? I think it was $39. $39.99. But just for you, Tillswell has sent me a 15% discount code. Yeah, I will put it uh, right here on the screen. But in case you can't read it, it is for Delta Frank Victor Frank Michael Delta 3. Hope you guys enjoyed this little quick review of the 969 soldering station. Works very well, reasonably priced. And when I hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to give it away to one of you. Along with the uh, Arduino Raspberry Pi kit and some more stuff that's going to be coming up. That's what we're going to do for 100,000 subscribers. We're just going to give away a whole bunch of stuff. So help me get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Tell your friends. That's it. I'm out. Peace.